So after we have filled up our dissolved oxygen bottles at the creek, upstream of the riffle, we need to now fix our samples. That means we're going to add some chemicals to it on site so that we can take our bottles back indoors and actually measure the amount of dissolved oxygen without adding oxygen to our bottles by driving to our indoor place and even getting up the bank. So we need to stop the adding the, of the oxygen process to it right now. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to fix our samples. So first of all, need to put on protective equipment. So we'll be putting on our gloves and goggles. Since we are working with chemicals. Okay. Then what we will do, so we will start with DO number one first. We'll get one DO number one, one packet per bottle. And hold it at the top and flick it like you would a sugar packet or cocoa and get everything down in the bottom. We'll cut the top off and we'll keep track of our trash. Put it back in the test kit or the bag that we brought. So we're adding our DO number one to one of our bottles. Get everything out of that packet and then we'll do the exact same thing with our second bottle. Then next comes DO number two. And again, one packet of DO number two per bottle. Flick this just the same way, cut the top off. Keep track of our trash. So I'm adding the DO number two powder packet to my first bottle. And I'll do the same thing with our second bottle. Okay. Then what we need to get out of our bag is our liquid waste container. We'll take the top off and keep track of the top because we will use it to restopper the bottle when we're done. And our funnel. Put this off to the side a little bit. Because we are going to have a little bit of liquid waste when we stopper our bottles. So then we'll get out one of the glass stoppers and there's a little bit of DO2 that's floating on the surface. So we're just going to break the surface tension. So the rest of that DO number two will fall down into the bottle. Then making certain that my bottle is over the liquid waste container, I'm going to shove the stopper in, hold the stopper in the bottle with my finger and then pour off the extra liquid into our funnel in the liquid waste container. And then holding the stopper in the bottle with my finger, I'm going to give it several really good hard shakes. This is going to mix everything. It's going to let the reaction start between the DO number one, DO number two. So it is going to be a foggy yellow color. There will be reagent in the bottom of the bottle. It's not going to all dissolve, but it does need to be shaken hard enough where it mixes. So we'll do the exact same thing with our second dissolved oxygen bottle. So using the glass stopper, breaking the surface tension so the rest of that DO number two falls into our bottle, making certain we're over our liquid waste. Shove the stopper in, pour off the extra liquid. And give the bottle a really good hard shake. So everything mixes, 
And yes, there still will be reagent in the bottom of the bottle, but that's okay. As long as we shake it hard enough, then it will be fine. So now we're going to let both of our bottles sit for five minutes or until the flocculant, it's going to be a semi-solid, falls below the white line on the bottle. So whichever comes first, five minutes or until that flocculant settles. Okay, so we're looking at our bottles. It has been five minutes. Our bottles have not settled below the white line, but it has been five minutes, as I said. So we will go ahead and do our second shaking. So we're holding the stopper in the bottle with our finger. Give it a really good several hard shakes. We want to remix, resuspend the solution in the bottle. So it goes back to that cloudy color, yellow color, and uh, there still will be reagent in the bottom. It still will not all dissolve, but we want it to go back to that solid cloudy yellow color. We'll do the exact same thing with our second bottle. So hold the stopper in the bottle with the finger. Several hard shakes. So it is remixed, resuspended, that cloudy yellow color. And again, we will wait another five minutes or until that flocculent, that semi-solid, falls below the white line on the bottle. So it has been our second five minutes and our bottle still has not settled yet, but it has been our second five minutes of waiting. So we will proceed. Next step is DO number three. And we'll get one package per bottle of DO number three. And these packets, as you've noticed, they are a very hard plastic. So be careful when you cut them off. I usually try and cut off about three-fourths or so, or cut it off in the bag that you brought. Actually, I think I'll do that today. There we go. So we do not want to trash our creek site. So what we'll do is we'll twist off the glass stopper. And then we'll add the DO number three to our bottle. And if you get any reagent on the neck of the bottle, make certain just angle the bottle slightly to use the liquid to get the rest of the reagent in there so we can get a nice tight seal. On restoppering, you hold the stopper just over the bottle and use gravity and just drop it. And gravity will force it down in the bottle. Now I'm looking at the shoulder and neck of the bottle. If there's any air bubbles, you need to pull the stopper back out and restopper it. So hold with your finger the stopper in the bottle. Empty out our little bit of liquid waste that we have in there. Shake it up. And now we have a see-through yellow amber color solution. Most likely there will be um, a byproduct of the reaction in the bottom. That is very, very common. That's usually there. But as long as you shake it up so that flocculent has all dissolved, then it should be good to go. So we'll do the exact same process to our second bottle. So get out a DO number three packet. Cut the top off. I usually squeeze on the packet so it's more of an O-shape opening as opposed to a slender eye slit. Twist and pull on the stopper. Add our DO number three. It's down the center of the bottle as we can. And get the rest of that reagent by using the liquid in the bottle. And get it off the neck of the bottle so we can get a nice tight seal. And restoppering, just hold it, use gravity, let it drop, push down, look for any air bubbles, which I don't see any. And I'll pour off the extra liquid. Give the bottle a good couple hard shakes. And so now our second bottle is fixed. This is the perfect time to compare both of our bottles. They should be the same color of yellow, the same intensity of yellow. That means that when we get back inside, they should get a very 
comparable answer between the two bottles. So like at most one, maybe two drops difference of the sodium thiol sulfate. And that's what we want. We want that repeatability effect. If the bottles, if one was lighter than the other, what you would need to do is empty both of them in the liquid waste rinse out both bottles and you need to refill them here at the creek and refix them. So a very quick comparison of the color here, making certain that they're the same color of yellow, is going to save you a lot of time in the end. So now we have both bottles fixed. You can put one of them in the opening of the test kit, the other one in the white cylinder, and we will pack the reagents around that second bottle. Get our scissors in there as well, and our thermometer and filling tube. We will put our cap back on our liquid waste bottle. We'll put that back in our bag. Make certain our trash stays in the kit. Close the lid, put it back in our bag, and then we're ready to go back inside and do the rest of our testings.